In the past 12 months, I've generated $20 million in e-commerce sales as a 20-year-old kid in college traveling the world. For the past four months, I was living in Prague, Czechia, taking college classes, visiting six different countries, and in the process, making more money than most of my friends' parents. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my six biggest takeaways for making this whole online business thing actually happen. As far as what I do, I run a successful email and SMS marketing agency for e-commerce brands. So this is a brief journey from going flat out broke to now generating millions of dollars for my e-commerce clients at now now the age of 21. I'm making this video to add some context to a lot of my content and to potentially inspire some others to do the same. I grew up in a typical middle class rural family in Portland, Oregon. I genuinely could not be more thankful or appreciative for the privilege that I've had growing up, but that's not to say that there weren't some struggles along the way. In my early years, some could say that we were rich, we had a massive house, a ton of money, we were traveling multiple times a year, we had a house on a lake, we had a house in the mountains, as well as just our massive main home base. Then the 2008 economic disaster hit and we pretty much lost everything overnight. We went from having tens of millions of dollars to having absolutely nothing. Obviously that took a big toll on my family and my parents' relationship. They ended up having a divorce and then I lived across my mom and my dad's places, 12 different houses and apartments. My mom was forced to go back to work and myself and my two sisters had to live off of my mom's teacher's salary and this is where I first began to develop my sense of money. Again, I always had a great roof over my head and I always had all my meals made. My mom is an absolute saint but there was definitely a lot of struggle and she definitely didn't show it, I knew I had to do something to secure my future. I started working when I was 13 and I had multiple different jobs, often working multiple at a time. I was making t-shirts for local sports companies. I was a swim instructor for kids ages four to 12. I was a rodeo food cart worker. I did pretty much everything. And this was also on top of doing other side hustles. I also had just an amazing high school experience. I was playing three sports pretty much every year and I was playing it at a high level and I was captain of pretty much every team that I was on. I also had an awesome friend group and social life. And I also had a 4.0 all through throughout middle school and high school. But throughout this time, which is supposed to be the time of your life and the happiest times of your life, I struggled intensely with anxiety, things that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. I had chronic depersonalization disorder, which started freshman year. That's essentially just the feeling where you feel detached from your own body. And you're just in a constant state of paranoia. And it's almost like you're looking at yourself from like a third person point of view at all times. If you've ever had panic attacks, it's kind of like living in a panic attack just all the time. And at its worst, I was having four to six panic attacks every single single day for weeks on end. I remember I'd feel one coming on in like algebra class and then I would have to just like kind of walk out of the room silently, go into the bathroom, lock myself in a stall and wait for the panic attack to pass over. Two years in, I completely forgot what it was like to be normal. I thought I was trapped like this forever and I was destined to a life of suffering. I had the deepest, darkest thoughts that you could have and I was really close to acting on them. I did all the typical routes of treatment like therapy, meditation, medication, everything like that and just none of it worked. I genuinely didn't think that I was going to make it in a long Around. Then in a time of reflection, I realized that my anxiety was very easy to manage when I was in times of chaos, like in the middle of finals or in the middle of playing different sports. And the times I felt the worst were like summer break, winter break, or in between sports seasons. And those are the times when my brain was dormant and I just didn't have a lot of stuff going on. See, the human is a problem solving machine. And when there are no problems or anything going on in the outside world, it's gonna turn in on itself and find problems within itself. So I went on a mission to distract my brain at all times. I started to work, work, work and become obsessed with entrepreneurship entrepreneurship kind of out of need. Now I used to collect sports cards and Pokemon cards when I was like 10 and in a time where I was bored and I was like, I need to get my brain on something. I dug out those cards from the attic and began taking pictures of all those cards and uploading them into eBay. And this is also because I was broke and I wanted more money. And funny enough, people were actually buying these old pieces of cardboard for $10, $20, $50, even over $100. And then at that point I was hooked. It was absolutely everything that I did every single day was flip, buy and sell sports cards. I'd be doing it online, going to different sports shows, running different social media accounts, I'd spend $5,000 on a piece of cardboard and then flip it for $6,000 to a guy named Randy in North Carolina that I've never seen before just on a Slack message saying, hey, you send the money, cool, I'll send you the card. And it was so much fun and I was just obsessed and slowly my anxiety started to fade away and I was making thousands of dollars in the process. But this only lasted around two years. I didn't think I would be able to go to college because of my anxiety, but as things started to get more manageable, I decided to do it. And I went off to the University of San Diego. I went for essentially a full ride and so 
I put the sports card business to side to go to school and focus on partying. Well, not entirely, I had classes and I was still doing some side hustles and whatnot, but you go to college, obviously there's gonna be some partying involved. I did this for about six months and then my anxiety really started to come back. I was feeling useless. I just felt like I didn't have a driving purpose in myself. I was still keeping my entrepreneurial spirit, flipping some sports cards and doing some NFT and crypto stuff, but none of that stuff was sustainable. Towards the end of the year, I got back into copywriting because I was doing copywriting and emails for my past sports card brand. So I started to learn more in doing blogs, product description, different email copy, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And then at that point, that's where I discovered the beautiful realm of money Twitter. It's just a side of Twitter doing the same exact things as me, sharing game and sharing their process along the way. That's when things really started to turn around and I really started to understand the agency business model, which if you don't know what an agency is, it's essentially offering a service to another business. Things like doing Facebook ads or doing copywriting or doing email marketing for other brands, coaches, or consultants. It seemed brilliant. If I could learn something that could generate a brand $50,000, they'd be stupid to not send me a thousand so that's what I started doing and by the end of the year I was all in studying working and just doing everything I could I quit all my jobs that I had lined up for the summer to try to make this thing work and that was despite the doubt that I had from my friends and family now obviously your friends and family aren't going to explicitly put you down where it's like oh you're stupid you shouldn't be doing this it's things like oh well good luck man or ah, I don't know you can tell that they're kind of like not for it and this was a huge lesson for me I bet on myself put all my cards on the table and I forced myself to make it work this is what I recommend to anybody trying to get into something something like this. Just go all in. I knew that if I had a summer where I could dedicate every single day to this thing, I knew by the end I'd at least be able to figure something out. So I started buying courses, joining communities, and working literally 8 to 12 hours a day just trying to learn. And I was getting absolutely zero dollars for it. And I was just trying to be a sponge and learning every single day. But my knowledge really started to take a flip when I stopped listening to the 70 year old accounting executives and started listening to dudes who were 21, 22 years old who were just a couple steps ahead of me. And this is my my first takeaway from making it an online business. Listen and take the advice from guys who are just like you, they're your age and they're exactly where you wanna be. And they can't be miles ahead of you. You don't wanna listen to a dude making $50 million a year because the problems that you are going to face are not going to be $50 million problems. You need to be listening to dudes who are just a couple steps ahead of you because they're gonna have up-to-date information and they're gonna know the exact problems that you're dealing with because they were just dealing with them. I recommend listening to business podcasts every single day from the dudes that you wanna be like. And this is what I did, I listened to podcasts it's like Cardinal Cast from Cardinal Mason, Internet Kids by Ben Bader and Harry Swales. I listened to the Agency Builders podcast with Andre and Christian, as well as their new podcast, Stick Talk. Eventually, with everything that I was learning, as well as my previous knowledge and experience from running my sports card business, I had the skills that could generate businesses hundreds of thousands to potentially millions of dollars. And this was all through copywriting. So. I tried. It's cool in theory to be able to say you can make all this money for clients, but how are you gonna get established businesses to trust you when at the time I was 18, 19 year old kid in college with absolutely zero experience in e-commerce brands. And this was my first major roadblock. I was reaching out to at least 50 brands per day, emailing them, reaching out on Instagram, reaching out on job boards, everything, and I was getting absolutely nowhere. I was waking up every day at 6 a.m. to go to a coffee shop, and then I'd come back halfway through the day, continue to work at home till 6 p.m., just trying to land a client for months. With absolutely zero success and I wasn't getting paid and I needed money, I wanted to give up every single day. But I knew with every message I sent, I was one step closer to getting somebody to actually say yes. Eventually after doing a ton of free work, just creating emails, creating copy and sending it to brands, I started to get a decent hang of e-commerce email marketing and I started to get pretty good. And at that time, I found out about a job board called Upwork and I really started to get a hang of it. I was reaching out to 20 brands a day on Upwork minimum and I eventually started to get my first clients. You should have seen me on my first sales call. It was an absolute wreck. I didn't know what I was doing and I was shitting bricks. But I pushed through, started to get some projects, and I started stacking testimonials. And in June, on a family trip to Hawaii, I landed my first big client as an in-house email marketer and copywriter for a brand doing two to three million dollars per month. And there was definitely a lot of luck involved. They were interviewing 10 different people for that position and I was easily the least qualified and also the youngest. They gave a trial assignment for putting together two to five emails. It's supposed to only take an hour or two, but of course, I spent around 12 hours on them. I was hoping to impress them, and I did. I went on multiple different interviews and calls with them. I was just very upfront about my experience. I was like, hey, I'm not the most experienced. I'm young, obviously. You might even be stupid if you went with me. I'm not the safe choice, but with me, you get this, this, this. Everything you see is what you get. If you're my largest client and my only client, then essentially you're going to get all my effort. And sure enough, they chose me. That is my second biggest takeaway in getting started an online business. Be real and play to your strengths. I was 
was having absolutely zero success in my outreach trying to pose as some expert or you need to be doing this, 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 but things really started to make a switch when I was like, hey, I'm not the most experienced, but look at this work that I made for you. If you like it, then let's get on a call and we might be able to work something out. And business owners really value that honesty because a lot of people in this space are just fakers. And then right there, I was off to the races. This brand was paying me $40 an hour to be doing all this different copy flows and campaign management and I absolutely sucked. I didn't know what I was doing. I was underperforming and was just all over the place. But fortunately through these mistakes, I learned they kept faith in me. So shout out to them. And I was able to use this case study in the amount of money that I've been generating for them to sign other clients. By the end of summer, I was making $5,000 per month doing all sorts of different copy projects and having a few long-term clients just writing copy and doing email marketing for them. This was my learning do it all phase. And this is my third biggest takeaway for making it an online business. You have to do it all. You have to do everything so that you can find what you're actually good at and also what you enjoy. Plus, when you do all sorts of different work, you're able to get a well-rounded skill set. This is why I hate niching down at the beginning of your experience that a lot of people focus on because you can't just pick your gig that you will crush just magically out of a hat. You need to explore your options, try it all, find what you like, find what you're good at, and then niche down and focus on that. I loved e-commerce and I was the best at email, so that's what I decided to focus on. So I stopped working with some of those clients doing all sorts of different stuff, focused on that niche. At that point, I was getting really good and by the end of summer, I generated over a million dollars for my e-commerce clients. Just when everything was going so well, summer ended and I had to go back to college. But that, of course, didn't stop me. I was waking up at 6 a.m. to go to the library. I'd work for a few hours, have classes, go back to the library and work for a few more hours. Then hit the gym, get food and go back to working. This was a lot. This was definitely my grind phase. But school and social life definitely put a huge wrench in my business because the business purely operated on how much time and effort I was willing to put into the business because it was just me. I started to slow down a bit at the beginning through the middle of the semester and then I went back hard going into winter break then by winter break I'd signed a few clients and I had my first $10,000 month and that was in December. Sounds awesome but I was stressed out of my mind and I was working like 14 hours a day. I was operating in-house for all these different e-commerce brands doing all of their copy and I was just completely capped on time. I was stressed out of my mind and I was starting to feel burnt out. That's when I decided that it was time to make a switch from freelancing to actually develop myself into running an agent. Agency. I had awesome strategies to make these e-commerce brands a ton of money. Now it was time to develop systems to get a team and start training the team to fulfill on the strategies that I used to generate my clients over seven figures. But I wouldn't be able to do this with my current workload because like I said, I was working like eight to 14 hours every single day. It took a lot of balls, but after my biggest month ever, I took a massive pay grade, dropped some of my clients, and I dropped from $10,000 a month to $4,000 a month. And I did this to try to focus on building a business that I actually liked and that that I didn't have to be inside all day every day and this was obviously a major ego hit for me this is my fourth major lesson for making it in online business sometimes you have to take one or two steps back so that you can take two or three steps forward you have to sacrifice in order to grow everybody in any business will have to make the transition from freelancing and doing everything yourself hands-on to systemizing your process and eventually delegating that and making it repeatable so other people can do it for you so essentially I had to start from zero I would work two to four hours a day on fulfilling for the current clients that I kept. And then the remaining six to eight hours would go to building infrastructure and learning how to actually build my agency called WellCopy. These were things like my email marketing systems, things like my landing page, my VSL, my video tutorials for internal systems, my sales process, my outbound marketing systems, things like cold email. And these were all things that I knew absolutely nothing about. So it took a long time. And at the same time, I really started to go hard on Twitter. I was posting my progress, what I was learning, and I was able to develop connections with other people similar to me, and we were able to share game with each other to grow together. This was a long, grueling process that took months and months and lots of failures and lots of wasted money. But still luckily during this whole struggle process, I was still knocking things out of the park for my current clients, generating great results and having amazing experience during the process. And of course, documenting what I was doing so that I could apply to future clients. And eventually with everything that I was doing and off referrals, I started to sign a few more clients actually working with the agency, but I was breaking for them. I was not generating good results. I actually even made my first hire, which was a huge step for me. I trained her to work alongside me inside these accounts, build up experience, and she absolutely crushed it, and she's still with me today. But still, I just wasn't good enough. I didn't have any agency experience. Results just weren't there. Clients were walking all over me, and it was taking a ton of time and frustration. I had to look
look for help because I couldn't just do this all by myself. So what did I do? I went to the best of the best, to the guys I look up to and the guys that I aspire to be. I joined a coaching group and community called Client Ascension, which entails multiple calls every single day, hours of work every single day, and almost more importantly, a five-figure investment, which was a lot of money to me at the time. And I even chickened out the first few opportunities I had at joining. This was the most I'd ever spent on anything, but I finally did it and it was the best decision that I ever made. This is my fifth biggest lesson in making it an online business. Pay for the best of the best and invest in yourself. Sure, you can go with cheaper options or try to figure things out on yourself, but you're going to pull your hair out in frustration and it's going to take six to 12 months longer. Just pay for the best of the best. The reason that they're priced that way is because they're that good. And even if the program isn't good that you're buying into, putting that much money down in an investment makes you figure your shit out. If you put $10,000 into something, you just blew it away, you're forced to make it work. And every single thing that they're going to teach you, you're going to take it to heart and apply with force. But fortunately, the program is the best of the best and it fulfilled on everything and more. And I started to take massive leaps and bounds in my business. I went to every single coaching call about four to five a day. I was working for over 10 hours every day and I was applying everything I learned with speed. Everything started to align, the pieces started to fall into place and I started gaining some traction. I started to sign a couple more clients and I was using a lot of time. So I had to make a couple of more hires. One thing that this program taught me is that you don't set up all the infrastructure and do everything ahead of time. You sign these people and build the infrastructure as you go and hire as you need to. So I would sign the clients, figure out the workload, and then hire and delegate accordingly. And at this point, I was dialing in my sales process, getting a ton of sales experience, and really locking in my email marketing strategy. So just through consulting and being inside over 35 different brands, I was able to find out what works, what doesn't work, what are the similarities of the big, high-performing brands, and what are the differences in the low-performing brands. So now, I was a real email marketer, and I was good. So now client results really started to take off, absolutely crushing, and I've been able to build off that to where I am now. From there, there was really no special sauce from going from the that point where I was at 5k a month to where I am now besides continuing to pay for coaching executing profusely and focusing your major attention on client results slowly but surely you start to build up your skills and your reputation and that's my sixth biggest takeaway for making it an online business I'd love to come on here and say do this hack and you'll be at ten thousand dollars a month in 60 days but I just can't anybody who does tell you that is just trying to sell you their course or their coaching program there's no shortcut there's no cheat code and there's no overnight success the only thing is time Consistent, dedicated action compounds, as well as your skills. I've been at this every single day for two to three years, and I still haven't even scratched the surface. But the only way I've been able to work eight to 12 hours every single day on the same thing is because I genuinely love what I do. You have to love it. You have to love what you do, or else somebody who does will lap you. And today I'm doing the same stuff that I started doing two years ago, and I'm continuing to build despite moving around. I just got back from Europe. In the past few months, I'd been to Croatia in Split and Havar, I'd been to Munich, Germany, I'd been everywhere in Northern Italy, Milan, Cinque Terre, and Genoa. I went to Rome as well. I went to Switzerland and went to Lucerne and Zurich. And I even traveled back in the US in October to go to Tampa to meet with some online friends, as well as some other quick stops in the UK and Czechia. And now I'm moving back down to San Diego to continue college classes. And I have a growing team of seven and they absolutely crush it and I couldn't do any of this without them. So shout out to them. So that's my story from rich middle-class fans family with tens of millions of dollars to losing everything, starting over, to now traveling the world, running my agency, and scaling e-commerce brands. I hope this story inspires you to take action, and I hope that it inspires you to play the long game. You have to put in the hours for a prolonged period of time to see results. So start now and work at it every day, and then your future self, six to 12 months from now, will be thanking you. If you got some value from it or liked the story, make sure that you like the video or subscribe. It means the world to me, and it lets me know that you like this type of content. Make sure that you're following me on Twitter and Instagram so you can keep up with my story. Thank you so much for watching this video again, and I'll see you in the next one.